All right, all right, all right. Counting outcomes and theoretical probability. Yesterday we talked about just plain probability, finding the probability of flipping a coin, probability of drawing a spade from a deck of cards. Now we're going to be going into a little bit more detail of the counting outcomes and theoretical probability. Let's talk about these quick vocab words. The first one is the counting principle. We'll follow along here. If there are m ways of making one choice and n ways of making a second choice, then all you have to do is take m times n. The other one is theoretical probability, which you can count the outcomes to help you find the theoretical probability of an event in which outcomes are equally likely. So if you notice here, the p stands for probability, so the probability of an event equals the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. And we'll go into more detail right now with how to use the counting principle and the theoretical probability principle. So here's example one in your notes. I'll read this to you, make sure you're following along. The school cafeteria sells sandwiches for which you can choose one, let's circle that, one item from each of the following categories. So you can choose between two breads, wheat and white. You can also choose between two meats, ham or turkey, and then two condiments, mayonnaise or mustard. Now notice all these say or, or, or. So that means you have to choose one or the other. Draw a tree diagram to find the number of sandwich, sandwich choices. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you, and you can go ahead and pause it and write in your notes, what this would look like. This is what your tree diagram would look like. You can have it going up and down or going across like this, but let's go into more detail. Your first choice was between wheat and white, so you're going to make those your first two choices. After you choose what kind of bread you want, whether wheat or white, you're going to have to choose if you want ham or turkey. Okay. Now if you pick wheat, your choices are ham or turkey. Okay. If you pick white, ham or turkey. No matter what kind of sandwich or what kind of bread you um, pick, you're going to have to pick mayonnaise or mustard. So each branch of the tree represents one choice. For example, wheat, ham, mayonnaise, sandwich, just one choice. So if you want to count how many options there are, all you have to do is count the last branch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different choices. All right, let's talk about example number two. How many two-digit numbers can be formed for which the first digit is odd and the second digit is even? So if we talk about this, it says how many two-digit numbers? So you know that th this number is going to have two digits. So here's one digit and here's the other. Uh, let's just make up an example. Um, Two-digit number, just an example of this would be, let's go 11. Okay, that's a two-digit number. Okay. So how many two-digit numbers can be formed for which the first one is odd, so this one has to be odd, and the second one has to be even? Okay, first number odd, second one even. Okay, well, how can we tell? Well, you could just go through and go, okay, what numbers between 10, because that's the first two-digit number, and 99, okay, which is our last two-digit number, you could go ahead and count them, so you're just going to list all of them. That would take a long amount of time, so we do not want to do that. Okay, all you have to do is this. This is the counting principle. Okay, you have two choices. The first one has to be odd. What numbers are odd that you could put in the first digit? Remember, this has to be only one digit. I could take a 1, a 3, a 5, a 7, or a 9. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different choices. Okay, how many even numbers could I choose? two, four, six, eight, and we're going to count the zero as an even. So that's one, two, three, four, five choices. So we have five choices for an odd number and five cho choices for an even. We're going to take those two choices and multiply them together, and we get 25 choices. Okay, how many two-digit numbers? 25. In this next example, it says use a tree diagram, so we should know that that's going to look like example number one, uh, what that looked like. And then notice we have this new word so that says sample space. 
that's the total amount of options that you have. So like if you go back to example number one, those were all eight sandwiches that you could possibly have. That is a sample space. Okay, so they're saying to use a tree diagram to show the sample space for guessing right or wrong on true on two true or false questions, then find the probability of guessing correctly on both questions. So first off, I'm going to make a tree diagram, and I'm going to make one that looks a little different than the one in example one. I'm just going to go like this. Okay, on my first question, okay, I'm either going to get it, on the first question, I'm either going to get it correct or I'm going to get it wrong. So on a true and false question, you only you can get it correct or you can get it wrong. There's no in between. Okay, that's why they brought up this question with two of them. So on the first question, I'm either going to get it correct or wrong. Now, if I get the first question correct, my options for my second question, I'm either going to get it correct or wrong. If I get the first one wrong, I can either get the next one correct or wrong. So if I were to ask you how many total or how many total uh, possibilities there are. I could either get the first one right and the second one right. I could get the first one right and the second one wrong. I could get the first one wrong and the second one right. Or I could get both of them wrong. So I have four, one, two, three, four different options or four different possibilities. Now it says use the tree diagram to show the sample space. So there we go. That's that right there. But then it says then find the probability of guessing correctly on both questions. So we will want to find the probability of getting two correct. Can't spell. So what's the probability of getting or guessing correct on both questions? Well, this one has both wrong, so that one's out. Okay, this one right here has one wrong and one correct. We're looking for both questions correctly. This one, nope. There's our only one. Wow. So evidently only one out of the four are both correct. So I'm going to write one over four as my probability. You could also say it, it would be a 25% chance. Okay, but I prefer you to write it as a fraction. Last question, and probably the most difficult one for seventh graders. In some state lotteries, the winning number is made up of five digits. Okay, that's important. Five digits chosen at random. Suppose a player buys five tickets with different numbers. What is the probability that the player has a winning number? So this is gonna, their number is going to be a five digit number. Okay. Suppose a player buys five tickets with different numbers. So what I'm going to do actually right now is I'm going to erase all this ink and I'm going to show you guys what um, this problem would look like. So first find, uh, first find the number of possible outcomes. For each digit, there are 10 possible outcomes. So for each digit, you could pick a number between 0 through 9, OK, because it's a five-digit number. So each digit could be a number between 0 through 9, which means that the first outcome, you could have 10 different choices. Second outcome, you could have 10 different choices. Third digit, 10 choices. Fourth digit, 10 choices. Fifth digit. 10 choices. So you guys understand why the pro why the probability of you winning the lottery is not very much? Because there are 100,000 total different outcomes or different tickets that you could buy. So look what happens. Then find the probability where there are five favorable outcomes. So why is there five favorable outcomes? Because you bought how many tickets? Five. So there's 100,000 total outcomes, which goes on the bottom of our fraction. Okay, and then we have five tickets that we bought, so that goes on the top. And what we do to solve it, okay, is we put five over uh, 100,000, like I said, and then we find the probability by reducing, and we get 20, one over 20,000. What I'm quickly going to do right now is I'm going to just go through this PowerPoint just by clicking so you can pause it and write down the notes again. So here's what the first slide should look like. Here's what the second slide should look like. Oops. That's what the second slide should look like in your notes. This is the third one.
here's the last one. Last but not least, you can go ahead and write down this in your planner. This is your homework that you can work on for the rest of the hour, and this will be due on Friday. Peace out. Hopefully we beat Mankato East, and we're moving on to the semifinals. Booyah!